Hello, everybody. Water is the most mysterious substance in the universe. The water in your body has been around for billions of years, even before you were born. And it is critical to understand that that water was once a part of a bacteria, a part of an animal, a part of a plant, a part of a rock, and so on. And water does not respect the normal rules of chemistry. I mean, water is made of two light atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. And at ambient temperatures, water is supposed to be gas. Nobody knows why water is liquid. And do you know that hot water freezes faster than cold water? Do you know that water does not respond to gravitational pull? Water can move upwards against the force of gravity. This is how the blood in your veins is able to move upwards to nourish your brain with oxygen and other nutrients. In the same way, plants can draw water from their roots to nourish their leaves. And again, virtually every object in the universe has a certain percentage of water. I discovered that that this fact has been re-emphasized in the Quran, chapter 21, verse 30. I was reading one day and I quote, it says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ And it is indeed from water we have given everything life. Biologists would confirm this to you by saying the human protoplasm is made up of about 85% water. I discovered water in my final year in university studying epidemiology. And then we were discussing the London cholera epidemic. It was the year 1854. Cholera had devastated the city of London. And leading scientists at the time were trying to postulate that the disease was spread through foul air. But a young gentleman called John Snow not, not just Snow from, from Game of Thrones. He's a young medical apprentice that was able to demonstrate through result driven experiments that a cholera was being spread in the Soho district of London through a certain pump. And immediately that pump was removed and sealed off, cholera disappeared into thin air. Then and then, I realized that water is the backbone of public health. Good water nourishes and inspires development in any nation. And bad water cultivates disease, poverty, and chaos. When I served in Gombe State, I was privileged to travel to a local government called Tuku. And then I saw a young boy drinking water from an earth dam. And at the same time, cattle and birds drank water from the same source. I was devastated by that experience because I had never seen anything like that. And then and then, I made a commitment, a silent commitment to myself that I would become a part of the solution. But I didn't know how at the time. So I started doing research. And then I realized that Nigeria had 259 billion cubic meters of water. It had an inland water system of about 13 lakes and reservoirs both of which have a combined surface area of about 4,550,000 acres. Yes, we still have around 55 to 60 million Nigerians without access to improved water sanitation. 60,000 children under the age of five die every year across the country. I became obsessed with the problem. And because I was obsessed, after three years, I came up with a solution. I do the filter explicitly. This is a revolutionary water purification system that purifies 1,000 liters of water using ultrafiltration technology. It removes bacteria, viruses, protozoans, and clears stability from any given sample of water. I installed it as a pilot project in a way that tortures foundation colors. The system now purifies 24,000 liters of water 
in that institution for the students. And they save the institutions in the institution one million naira every year. Now they use this money. Now they use this money to buy more books for the students and buy more laboratory equipment. But I kept researching. And then I realized that in Nigeria, eight billion naira worth of water is sold every day. Like I mean, eight billion naira worth of sachet and bottled water is sold every day across Nigeria. But then it's this is the fact. If people with responsibility do not do their job, other people come from outside and fill up the vacuum. If the water boards were able to grab this 8 billion naira every day, all communities across Nigeria would have had access to fire bottled water. So I felt filters could only reach a few people at a time. I wanted, I wanted a solution, solution that, that could reach millions, millions of people at a time. time. So, so I got together, together with my team and we built the WBPS 100. The, the first smart meter coming out of Nigeria, local development. And it was interesting to know that this, the first prototype of this meter was built here in Mina. The meter basically just records what I use in the meter. Since your bill at the end of the month allows you to make payment for water through your phone, and if you think you're smarter and you're not going to pay for water, it will shut you up until you pay. And then it comes with BK detection systems. I know for a fact that Kaduna State loses around 25 million naira every month from leakages and unregulated water. This meter also solves the problem. And, and it would help them save half a billion naira every year. So, so since we're talking, talking about changing mindsets, this, this particular event transformed my life entirely. 2018, 2018 I was studying innovation and entrepreneurship at MIT. And, and after, after a presentation, I got, I got this innovation. innovation. There, there were MIT professors. professors and, and to, to me, me MIT, MIT is, is the largest gathering, gathering of geniuses across, across the world. Like, like MIT, MIT has been the best university, university for eight consecutive times now. So, so I felt if I could do something, something in such a place, place and get, get MIT, MIT professors to stand up and, and other geniuses to clap for me, what, what is, is it in this world that I cannot accomplish? So, so basically, basically, I had to travel a long distance to discover things about myself. But right, right now, I'm standing just a few meters away from you to tell you that you can accomplish basically everything you want to accomplish. And then again, this is my vision for the resources in Nigeria. We have the NNPC towers there, and we have hydro towers. I've traveled, I've traveled to a lot of states in Nigeria and I've seen the water towers. They are the most gloomy and ill maintained structures across the country. I feel really sad to see that. So, so the hydro tower is, is my vision of what a water tower should be. An institution that partners with technological companies to come up with solutions that provide easy and efficient access to water for all and some people. And again, and again, talking about lofty ideas, ideas. This, this was an idea I got because of one of the most common characteristics of MENA. What is that? Frequent power failures. So I felt, how about a situation whereby a young man is walking in the street and suddenly he has to transfer money to his mother or he needs to call his wife or call his friend and he doesn't, he doesn't need to go back home, home and plug out his phone to get a child. He, he just dials the USSD code and soup 10% charge. It, it, it sounds, sounds like, like magic, right? right? But, but, but it, it's, it's, it's just technology. technology. We, we all know, know that, that energy can, can neither be you know, created or destroyed, destroyed, but can, can be transferred from one form to another. All we're doing is harnessing energy from the sun 
using the retinal or base station, transforming into data or other form of energy that can be transmitted. We transmit it via station, and when you request for energy, it will just isolate your, the IP address on your phone, and so you get a charge. And a situation whereby you're driving uh, an electric vehicle like a Tesla, you're stuck in the countryside or in the desert, and you are low on battery. You dial the SSD code on the bar on the dashboard, and so you get 100 miles added to your battery. I'm saying this because I want you all to understand that this is an idea that was generated out of me. I want you all to understand that there is no limit to what you can achieve or imagine. I'm going to leave you with three points. The first of them is humanity. We have lost our humanity. That is why the world is so messed up right now. I want everyone here to make a commitment to either create a business or a service that solves a problem that impacts human lives while making profit at the same time. It's what we call social entrepreneurship. And for you to understand that as a human being, every other human being you see has blood, just like yours, flowing in his veins. Do not allow yourself to look down on anyone. Do not allow or create something that degrades human beings. I believe if you do this, we would leave the world much better than we found it. And then, and then again, again do, do not, not despise, despise humble beginnings. beginnings. The, the fact, fact that you came from a poor family, family the, the fact, fact that things, things are not working for you at the time. time. You, you know, know, a few, a few years, years ago, ago, I was just a young man on the street of Abuja with nothing but an idea in my head. I trekked so far that I had a hole in my shoe. I still have a shoe at home, kept it for history. And I've met a lot of people trying to raise funds so that I could get the with my first brother. Some of them mocked me, some of them laughed at me, some of them sniggered, you know, but I kept moving. I didn't give up. And, you know, after a while, we're here. So humble beginnings are not a curse. They are supposed to add fuel to your fuel. They are supposed to motivate you to do better. And, and lastly, lastly I, want I want everyone, everyone going, going out of this hall today to set, set a goal for himself, have a vision, take a direction, and, and put, put your feet down. down. And, and when, when you have put that, that feet down, down I, I want, want you to not turn, turn back. back. Go, Go forward, forward with determination, courage, precision, plan, practice, practice because practice, practice is very, very important. important. I had, I had to practice, practice a few times before, before I came to speak. Right? right? I have, I have a friend, friend in the U.S. Navy SEAL. I always ask him, how is it that your missions are so successful? The Navy SEAL are the most elite military force in the world. And all of that, he said, my friend, you know what? We practice so much that I know the shadow of my partner before I see him. So we need to practice. And finally, I want, I want everyone, everyone here to keep, keep impacting lives, lives touching, touching people, so much so that, that even the undertaker, undertaker is sorry when you die. Thank, thank you very much.